We're still talking about complex numbers, and in this video I want to explain to you why we need complex numbers and hopefully give you some appreciation for complex numbers at the same time. Several years ago I read this book, Pie in the Sky, by John Barrow. He's a British a physicist and mathematician and a really good writer and this book talks about numbers and the history of numbers and counting just a really well researched book and very well written um, and in this book there's there was a story I think it was down in one of the footnotes where he talks about this missionary who had encountered a very primitive tribal culture and he was learning the language of these people and he realized that these people have words in their language for numbers just like we do we have the word one and the word two and the word three and so on and we have these words that represent numbers well this primitive tribe they also had words to represent numbers in their language and specifically they had a word for one in their language and a word for two and a word for many and that's it. These people could count to two and no higher. And in fact, the word for many in their language was the same as the word for hair. And so if you wanted them to count something, for example, you put some, some rocks out on the table. So say here's some little stones and you said count these. They would just run their fingers through their hair and they would basic, basically be saying that there are many, there's too many to count. And for these people, that, that was in fact too many to count because they could only count to two. They're saying that it's like the hairs on your head, it's too many to count. And these people couldn't do anything with numbers higher than two. And there was uh, one instance where the guy was going to try to buy some cows from, from one of these people. And the going rate for the transaction was one cow would cost two sticks of tobacco. And this guy wanted to buy two cows, so obviously he shows up with four sticks of tobacco, two sticks of tobacco for each cow. And he's trying to make the transaction. And the guy's getting real confused and frustrated and he thinks he's going to get ripped off or something and he just can't handle it. And then the, the missionary remembered, oh, that's right, he can't count to four. And so he takes all the tobacco and leaves and then he comes back with two, two sticks of tobacco and purchases one cow and takes it away and then comes back again with two more sticks of tobacco and purchases another cow. And, and that was fine, but he couldn't buy... Uh, two cows at one time for four sticks of tobacco because that was beyond the ability of these people. They couldn't count beyond two. Now imagine coming to these people and talking to them about some other numbers. What if you try to talk to them about the number five? Well they've never conceived of a number that big. Or what about the number one-half or three-fifths? This is an entirely different type of number. These fractional numbers. Or what if you wanted to talk to them about irrational numbers, something like the square root of 3 or the number pi. These are things that these people have never conceived of. And if you try to talk to them about numbers such as this, you might get a response something like this. Why do you need all these numbers? You're just making it complicated. We've gotten along fine with the numbers 1 and 2, and we don't need all of this unnecessary complication. But you and I know, from our standpoint, from what we know about math, that these other numbers really do exist, and they're useful, and they're meaningful, and they're often necessary. And this guy may be getting along fine with the numbers 1 and 2, but you can see that he's clearly limited. He can't even perform a basic economic transaction because of the limitations of his number system. And he's certainly not going to build an airplane or design a telephone or something like that. So sometimes I get students asking me, why do we need complex numbers? Aren't we getting along fine with just the numbers on the real number line? Why do we have to make it more complicated? Well, the fact is complex numbers really do exist in the real world. And if you're going to do math in the real world, complex numbers sometimes show up. And what I'll do next is take you through a series of mental steps that takes you all the way from the basic counting numbers all the way up through the complex numbers and you'll understand why they fit into our number system the way that they do.